All right, guys, today we got a little different video. We're going to show you a comparison between uh, the Snap on Zeus scope and the ATS scope on a fuel pump waveform. Let's get into it. All right, guys, here we go. We've got a, the ATS scope hooked up. We've got the Zeus hooked up. Uh, let me show you what we've got it hooked up to. We've got both our amp clamps hooked up. Uh, one of them's on the power, one of them's on the ground. We're going to get the same signal. Remember, we're going to get the same amperage waveform on both sides of the circuit. So it doesn't matter if you can get to the ground or if you can get to the power. Either one's going to get, get what you need. So let's come on back up here. This is a, a 2000 BMW um, 5 Series. So it does have a bad fuel pump. The car came in with uh, no start. It died going down the road for the client. Uh, we got it in here. Fuel pump fuse was blown. We, somebody has put a 25 amp fuse in place of a 15 amp fuse for the fuel pump. So uh, we replaced the fuse and we've got uh, fuel pump starts running. And right now uh, we can look at the waveform. We can see that it's bad. Uh, we are going to show you a good one also, but I just wanted to kind of compare scopes. So this video is more about comparing scopes as opposed to fixing the car, but we are going to show you the, the fixed pump too. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. So, I don't know, hopefully we don't have much glare there. So, here's our Snap-on Zeus, and this is the scope. This is not the guided function scope, this is just a normal scope. Let's take the cursors out of there. Alright, so, we've got this waveform, which is quite ugly for a fuel pump. Normally we're going to see humps, looks like McDonald arches, all the way across. Uh, we you see that this is kind of, we can see the update right here, how it's kind of up, updating, 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 updating. So not super fast, um, but it's perfectly acceptable for what we need on this car. This is actually a really good scope that's inside the, the Snap-on Zeus. A uh, very capable scope for, for just about anything you need on an automotive application. So uh, if we want to, um, we can pause it. We can bring the cursors in. And we can, you know, move them around and take a look and see. All right, we got that one. We're gonna have eight bars on this pump, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we're gonna get this one right here. So that's one revolution of the pump, and we can see that it's pretty consistent as far as um, the humps. Well, not good humps, but the humps is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we got that tall one again. So we've got, you know, we've got that. Uh, We've got the hump that we can pick out that's kind of different, it's tall. If we wanted to go to this little pointy one, we can do that too. We can go here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there we are, same one again. So, you know, when you're looking at these waveforms on fuel pumps, you want to pick a hump that is kind of a standout. There'll always be one that's a little bit different, and you can measure from that. We can go in here and we can measure the milliseconds, and we can figure out fuel pump speed and things like that. But this one, if you notice, this is supposed to be a 15 amp fuse. And if you want to look at the amperage here, uh, and this is actually comes and goes, it gets worse at times and better at times. It's actually good right now. Let me go back to doing this. Let me take the cursors and turn them off. So if we want to look at it here, we can see that, you know, we're bumping up over 10 amps right there. That's pretty high for a 15 amp fuse. So uh, we're definitely pushing the limits on that fuse. and we can see how it's kind of waveforms kind of bumping up and down. Let's look over at the ATS. So we see we can do it with this with this scope absolutely perfectly fine. ATS, we can see the update rates a little quicker. Um, let's see, make sure I've got, let me compare apples to apples. We're at 40 milliseconds here uh, per division and on here we are at 50, so pretty close. Uh, obviously it's a little quicker update rate on this one. Uh, the reason that I like to use the ATS, the one thing that it can do that this one can't do, again, you can do what you need to do with this scope, 100%. The only reason I like ATS is I can come over here and I can do a deep record. Here it is for this, this pump. I can do this, and then I can come in and I can manipulate this so that I'm looking at what I want to look at. And it's just, uh, it's just personal preference. A lot of, a lot of guys like the um, Pico. There's nothing wrong with the Pico either. Great scope. But I just, I like this one. And again, I can bring my cursors in. Bring that one over here. This is, for me, where it gets a little easier just because I'm used to this, this scope. I can get the cursors. All right, one, one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there, is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then that one. So, and right here I can see, you know, we got a frequency of 86 hertz. We got our, our all of our measurements are over here. So uh, we can do calculations based on that and see what the, uh, what the speed of that pump is. Um, but we can see that this pump is no good. This pump is absolutely horrendous. Uh, if we want to bring this one down, we can actually look at the peak amperage on this one. That is 10.766. So definitely bad. And this one is probably showing about the same thing. It's just hard to see it. So, and we can manipulate this one too. We can go in and we can, uh, we can go and go, okay, let's take the 20 amp scale make it a 10 amp but it's going to go off the, up higher on the screen and we can bring this open a little bit but we're still up off the screen because the 10 amp is up here and I'm, I'm bottomed out on the um, as far as I can go down so I can't really see the top of it it's still a, you know it's still picking up what we need to pick up it's still a, you know the pattern is is perfectly you can diagnose this car based on this pattern 100 percent it's just a, for me it's a little more difficult to use um, but I used to use this all the time. Now, one thing I'm going to show you on this one, let's go into the guided functions. So this is basically going to be, this car is already in, this, in, this, in here. I'm going to go to fuel system. So let's back out. Let's go show you what I did. Guided component tests. And this is for people who are just getting new with the scope and you know, trying to learn how to do it, going to engine, let's go to fuel system, and then we got fuel pump. And it'll give you the component information, tell you about what it's supposed to do, where to put everything. So really good information there. And then we're gonna go here, and it's gonna give you a picture. This is what it should look like. This is where to hook up your scope. This is where to hook up your, your um, amp clamp, what to do with your amp clamp. I mean, basically it tells you everything you need to know on how to get connected to this vehicle and what the pattern should look like. Here's my only problem. There's the pattern. Now, that's a little different than the one we just looked at. And unfortunately in here, I haven't figured out a way at least to change the, this time setting. What I need to do here to get a better, to get a better uh, view of this is I need to change the time settings and I can't, it will not let me do that. Maybe somebody can comment on if there's a way of doing that on here, but that pattern there is really not going to help me. I mean, you know, I wouldn't diagnose this car based on that because I'm not comfortable with that pattern. Now, I will tell you this, when we put the new pump in there, I promise you we will get a pattern on, the, in, on this com guided component test and let's compare it. Let's see if it comes out to look like this, you know. Um, we're definitely gonna give it a shot. We're definitely gonna see. So it's been a long time since I've used that, that feature. So, um, but again, you can use this. This will help you um, get going if you need to know. Maybe you just need to know, how do I hook this up? Where is this component located? You know, how do I get that amp clamp? What do I do with that amp clamp? Do I need to zero that amp clamp? What is that for? You know, you could go in here and not have your, your scope turned on and just get, all your, just get all your information that you need, right? Get everything hooked up then back out of it and go into your regular scope okay just go into scope multimeter go to lab scope you know whatever i told you to put it on i'm going to low amp 20 right and, and get a pattern and then go in here and play here's the thing with scopes guys play with the scope move your move your stuff around what is 200 milliseconds going to look like all right you know a lot of lot of information there what's one millisecond going to look like nothing happening this thing is not able to pick up anything right okay there's our 10 milliseconds that's what we saw that's what the scope was set up with on the guided functions you know and we can see right there that's not a pattern that's useful to us really what about 20 it's getting a little better you know and then you can manipulate this way also go into 20 amp go here all right now we can see that maybe we go over to the, the 20 amp here and put it at 40 right well now it's off the screen okay so now, let's go over here to 40, 60. You know, see, it's off the screen, so you, you know. But don't worry about that, just keep playing around with it. And 60 is gonna be off the screen, I'm sure. Let's go 
let's go back to 20. All right, so, I mean, you're not gonna hurt anything by playing around. You're not gonna damage anything by playing around with your scope, okay? Um, I'm gonna try something else here. I'm gonna go and get a, uh, I'm gonna go get the little U-scope. I'm gonna go get the little one-channel scope. I've never hooked that up to a fuel pump before in my life. Let me go bring it over here real quick and we'll hook that up to this thing if I can get it hooked up to it. And uh, let's see what it looks like. Give me just a minute. All right, guys, I got the U-scope hooked up and now I've got a third amp clamp on the, on the, on the power wire, on the positive wire. So now we've got all three scopes hooked up at the same time. So, and first time I've ever done it. And let's look at, let's compare. So we got, see that one? Can you zoom in there a little bit? No? Okay. So we've got exactly the same pattern here that we've got there. No difference. Now, we've got a little different setup on this one. Got that two amps, but it's still showing the, what it is as two, four, six, eight, ten amps. So, I mean, it's still showing. That's from the white, probably two, four, six, eight, ten. Yep, so it's still showing the same amperage. We've got the same pattern. And again, when we get the good one in, we're going to hook this back up. I'm interested to see what the good one's going to look like on here. So, there is a inexpensive option, very inexpensive option there with an amp clamp. you got to buy this little scope and an amp clamp. And you're going to be able to diagnose a bad fuel pump. You've got not an inexpensive option, but a lot of people have this tool. And many people have this tool and do not ever use the scope. This has got a very, very capable scope in it. And if you're not using it, break it out, get it on some cars, play around with it, go through the guided component tests, uh, then go back out and play in the scope too. Don't just rely on that guided component. You need to come back out of that and start using it in other ways. So, and then of course we've got just a dedicated scope um, that, you know, obviously is extremely capable. And then you can have a Pico. Um, you know, we could bring a Pico over here and hook a Pico up to it, but I mean, it's gonna be right in the same line with this one. Actually, it's, it's a little less expensive than this one, but um, by the time you buy a laptop and that kind of stuff, you're gonna be in eh, close to the same price range. So, so there's three great options there. And you see the three different, uh, the three different, you know, three different looks of it, even though they're showing us the same thing. Um, let's get, so we got a new fuel pump coming in. It's gonna to be tomorrow. Uh, so we'll get the new fuel pump put into it. We'll get everything hooked back up again, just like this. And we'll get all those patterns pulled up and we'll see what it looks like. And we'll show it to you on all three of them. So, all right, so we'll see when we get the pump in. All right, guys, we're back. We've got the fuel pump in this BMW. We've got the scope hooked back up to it. We went ahead and hooked the ATS back up and the snap-on back up. And now let's look at the waveforms. Let's see how they compare to the way they were yesterday. So come on in, we'll take a look at this. So this is the same setup. We're on 20 amps. We got 10 milliseconds. I do believe that's where we were yesterday. Um, if not, make a comment down below. I mean, but I believe we were. When we look at this pattern, we can see this much lower now. We're at eight. We're not going over the 10. And I believe yesterday we were popping over 10 quite a bit and we had a much different looking pattern. Uh, the way that I know that is we can actually go in here. Yesterday when we went to 10 amp here, it went off the screen. We really couldn't see it. Now we can come in here and we can see a good pattern here and we can see that nine amps is about where the maximum is on that. So it's a much better looking pattern. Uh, we can also come in See if we can't change our time. A little more on the screen. There's a little more on the screen. Much, much better looking pattern, much cleaner. And this is a brand new pump and it does take a little time for the pumps to, to wear in and, and get to looking a little bit better. Uh, but this does look, it looks great. It, the amperage is a little bit lower and we're in, we're in range now for sure. What I'd like to do is go back. Remember yesterday we looked at the guided functions. So let's go back to the guided functions go back into the engine again. This vehicle's in there. It seemed like that was in a different spot, but all right. And let's just look at what it looks like. So here it is. All right, again, much better than it looked like yesterday. Remember yesterday we had those big wide gaps. We really didn't pick up a whole lot. Uh, today we've got humps. I still wouldn't use this uh, to diagnose the car with, but we can see it's much better, much better than it was. So. Again, 
Uh, this will get you to set up. You know, you can set up with this and then go over to the other scope and use it to uh, to see where you're. You know, come in here, look where this is. Okay, we're at 10 milliseconds. We're at 20 amps. Okay, well let's go back over. Use that for your setup if you're not comfortable setting one up. Go back over to the scope. Scope here, 20 amps where we just were. 20 amps. Let's go to 10 milliseconds where it just was, and there we go. We can see it's different on this screen. So now let's look at the ATS scope. So here's the ATS running. Again, yesterday we were over 10 amps. Today we're just below 10 amps, and again, brand new pump. It's probably gonna get a little lower than that over time. Uh, if we go over to uh, measure and deep record, let's start it. All right, let's uh, zoom out a little bit. I'll get a little better bite on that. We can see a much cleaner pattern. Nice, even. I mean, yeah, it's got a little waviness to it, but I'm okay with that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, guys. Sorry. Nice, even. You see there's nothing that really sticks out on this one now. No craziness, jaggediness. Everything's nice on this one. So we can see a really good one and we can see also is that 9.8 at the peak and again this is a brand new pump it's going to get a little bit better than that as time goes on so this is a good pump so this is what a good pump would look like on this car um, most of the pumps are going to look like this uh, this is comparing these two scopes and you can see that you can do it with either scope so again let's go back over here uh, again, we look at that one, we look at this one, if we want to take the time time up, we can make it almost look the same. The only difference in the two is, is just the speed, but we don't need, for the fuel pump, we're fine using this. Perfectly fine using this. Uh, crank sensors, you know, if you've got this in your arsenal, if you've got this sitting somewhere, it's got collecting dust, pull it out, get your scope leads out, start, start getting it into some cars, start getting it into some good cars, see what that looks like, you know and uh, kind of get an idea. Save files. You can save files in here too. So save the files and work with those. So it's, a, it's a good, very good scope to use. So hope this helps you guys, uh, you know, in your future scope endeavors. And if there's anything you would like to hear us, uh, you know, want us to look at or compare something, let us know in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. Thanks. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. If you did, hit that like button. It's free to subscribe, so hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. So every time we... All right, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. That sucked. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. It's free to subscribe, so hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you'll know every time we release a video. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. I don't know what that was, but <laughs> edit that out. <laughs>